Last Friday was National Yoga Day. 34 million people in the U.S. practice yoga, but that is just 10% of the U.S. population. Dr. Esan Jazini with the Virginia Spine Institute joins me now to talk about the benefits of yoga. Yeah. Thanks for being with us on, on this Sunday morning. Thanks for having me. Um, I know obviously you deal with a, a lot of patients with back issues, back problems, so many people impacted by this. Um, talk about yoga as, as a form of exercise to, to help with this. Yeah, so I got into yoga about five to six years ago. And the first time I did, I was like, oh my God, this is so hard. This is incredibly difficult. I used to do a lot of CrossFit, other, other uh, forms of fitness. And I quickly realized this is what I'm preaching to my patients. Mm -hmm. You got to work on your flexibility. You got to work on your core. And yoga really also instills the, the connection between the body and the mind. So there's also the mental health, health aspect of this and being mindful. And so I really encourage my patients now, and I've actually had a lot of my own patients come to the gym that I go to, uh, to really work on their fitness, their mental health, because it really helps to prevent back injuries. Yeah, and prevention, I mean, that's a, a huge aspect in all of this. What is it about the exercise of yoga specifically that you like uh, for your patients? And, and was it, what does it do for prevention? And then if you are already suffering from back pain? A great question. So what yoga does is it really helps to establish your roots, your foundation. You know, think about a tree. If a tree uh, grows a limb too far out without establishing the root, mm -hmm. it's gonna have, start having injuries, right? The body is the same way. Our core muscles, not just the abs, but the back muscles, helps to support our spine. So before you start to work out your biceps and the other, other muscle groups, you gotta build a good foundation. And so that's why I encourage my patients to first work on their core, work on their flexibility before trying to cross train and, and build other muscle groups. Yeah, that's really important. I mean, yoga, it's not easy. It looks like it, you know, it, it's low impact, sure, um, but it, the exercises are not easy. Do you suggest this as like a primary form of exercise or kind of an addition or, or what's, what's your suggestion? I suggest it as a foundation. You know, okay. it, it does seem daunting, but what's great about yoga is it's at any level, you can really just start, right? You can modify a lot of the, you don't have to do these crazy poses in the beginning. I, I didn't know how to do any of those things yeah. when I first started. Um, so it's really easy thing to get into. Uh, it really helps to establish that core, like I mentioned, and then you can just build upon that, right? It doesn't mean that's the only form of exercise that I do or encourage, but I think that's a really good foundation. There's other, the other forms of exercises like Pilates that also establishes a good core. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to just say that yoga is the only way, but I think it's a really good uh, way for most people across all age groups and, and genders. Uh, there's a misconception that guys can't do yoga, but more and more I see over the past four or five years that in my gym, that ratio is changing. So uh, I really, really encourage my patients to do that. Yeah, and quickly, we've got about a few seconds left, but are there any specific poses that you suggest, whether it's something specific for prevention or whether you're already suffering and uh, from back pain and maybe something you can add in in your daily routine? Yeah, so you know, one thing, is a great question. One thing I, I check my patients with is uh, a single leg raise stance, like a tree pose, okay. to look at their hip stability. That's actually been found to be a predictor of mortality. And so in, in yoga, you're basically trying to establish that core, and establish that balance. So there's about 10 good poses, but the one that's the most important is hip stability. Because okay. if you have hip stability, then you can start to add in weights and do other things uh, to be able to, be, to, to get a good strength, right? Because we don't want to just work on our core, we want to work on uh, other cardiovascular health, our, our other muscle groups. Um, so yeah, that's what I encourage my patients. Okay, all right, a good foundation. Dr. Giussini, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. We appreciate me. it. Of course.